So this is the next portion of electrical etching and this is um, picking your pattern or picking your design and then applying it to your metal. So there's a few different papers that you can use and I'll get to those in a second. The first thing I'll talk about is your design. Um, I'm going to be doing a a repeat on uh, four of the same designs here. So very simple but yet intricate. You can see that there is a good balance of black and uh, white lines or no, no toner. This has been printed on a laser printer and this is kind of what you want to look for, is, is a nice balance of uh, black and, and white areas. Or in the case of press and peel, it'll be black and blue. So talking about the papers, this here, and I did, the, uh, the, I did some etching yesterday just to uh, give a little demonstration or a little example of it for today. And so this is the glossy laser photo paper. This is what's sold as a proprietary brand paper for uh, $12.95 for a pack of five of them. And as I said, you can pick up a hundred of these for $21 Canadian, probably cheaper obviously in the United States. And I have the silver uh, piece here that has this applied to it. The next one is another cheap option and this is basically the recycled portion of an Avery label sheet. So you take the the labels off, the sticky labels off, and then what's left is the non-stick uh, layer of paper that's on the back and it's got a bit of a it almost feels like parchment paper I guess uh, a little caveat though this um, I'm just going to show you here it scratches off really easily and so this is not the best you can see how fragile it is However, it also comes off very easily onto your metal. So there, there is that. But um, I don't know. I think it's a bit too fragile. Just a little bit too fragile for electrical etching. And I'll, I'll show you on the actually etched sterling that I did yesterday. The next two options, it's really a toss up between these two. This is laser transparency paper. You print on the pebbly side. You'll be able to see uh, or actually feel which side is the printed side because it feels pe pebbly and the other side feels very um, smooth. I don't know if you can actually tell in the light. Okay, so that's the, the print side and then this is the, the non-print side. So you can see it's you know, glossy and shiny on the side that you don't print on, and then it's kind of a matte, matte looking finish on the non or on the printing side. And then this is what is actually designed and meant for etching, and this is blue press and peel. Um, glossy on one side don't print on that and matte on the other and that's the side that you print on so now in comparisons i'll just cover the the photo paper first so this didn't even make it into the etching bath because you can see that it didn't bond to the sterling silver uh, it was from the same sheet of silver identical um, so it should have bonded, it had the same scratch finish as everywhere else, as in this one here. So it essentially looked like this. There we go. And then I stuck four 
of the designs, same designs on the same piece of silver. And then these three made it because they passed the um, paper removal stage. And this one, when it uh, went got to the paper removal stage, it did really well up until the very end and then it started to come off the metal and if you go to the website where this paper is being sold this is typical of what happens so you might end up having to if you do decide to use the the laser paper uh, photo paper you may end up having to apply it five six a dozen times before you get it to adhere properly to your metal and uh, there is instructions on there that tells you that it's your um, laser toner uh, that's to blame you need to get an older laser printer just spare yourself the hassle and get yourself some blue press and peel or if you can't find the blue press and peel get the laser transparency paper. Either of those two options are going to be a lot less expensive than buying the proprietary photo paper. Um, obviously if you buy the photo paper it's going to be cheaper but you know don't even bother with that. So now looking at the I should show you what I'm going to make. So this is essentially what I'm my goal my end goal here is to make something like this. So this has been etched and it has then been enameled and then like the entire surface has been enameled and then what I do is I take a diamond uh, file and then scrape off all of the enamel on the surface which leaves the enamel in the recesses and this can be turned into any number of jewelry items. I just actually like having it to look at and hold and admire every now and then because it just looks so pretty and I like the way that the varying depth of the etch it's not a uniform etch you can see that where the 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 blue is lighter it's a more shallow etch and then where it's a darker blue it's a deeper uh, deeper etch but I just love this piece and so anyways I'm wanting to replicate this into something that I can actually turn into jewelry. Now this is a different design, but it's the same idea. So this, if you can see this here, um, well, let's see here. So you can see it's actually quite pitted around the etch and it's not a very deep etch and it's not a very crisp etch. So this was the throwaway label paper and I would say this is a third choice this is fourth choice if you can get this to adhere it actually does a really good job but the nuisance of adhering it is really yeah something to be avoided if you're just starting out you know learning this technique um, do yourself a favor and just go with the, the blue press and peel and then you can switch over to the photo laser paper down the road when you get more comfortable with um, feeling out the temperatures of how, how much temperature, time and pressure you need to uh, use to in order to get it to adhere to the, the silver. I've been etching for probably eight years now and this is mostly my last go-to choice of paper. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one on this end here was the laser transparency, overhead transparency paper, and it does pretty much a comparable etch to the PNP. &P. It's not bad. It's close. There was a bit of uh, breakthrough you can see up top here with the um, the etch going through the resist and a, and a little bit more here you can see that that little line there so it's uh, mind you I did etch for over two hours and so at that point in time the um, the etching resist will start to break down and I probably didn't add enough um, 
nail polish or other uh, external resist after I applied the, the laser toner to areas where it was a bit thin. So for my dollars, you can see that the press and peel did a really good job. It's a nice, uh, it's a pretty deep etch, you know, and that's about the extent of the etch that you're going to get with the electrical unit. Now, in my experience, I said that the battery powered one etches a lot faster and I'm going to set that up for uh, today's experiment so that you can see for yourself which one is the one you're going to choose. Okay, I'm going to be using my uh, griddle on the bottom. It, I find it just helps to heat up the metal uh, evenly, so top and bottom. You don't need to use one of these, but I find it just works really, really well. And I've put the metal on here. I'm going to turn up the griddle, electric griddle, up to setting three. And I have a little iron here, and it fits over both pieces of metal. And I'm going to set that up to the highest setting as well. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't probably set it up to the highest setting if you're just starting. Um, Put it on about a, a, a number two setting or a woolen setting and the reason for that is that if the toner melts quickly and it gets away on you and you're not using a good firm up and down technique and you wobble the toner is it, it's actually going to feel like you're on on a layer of grease and the, the the iron will slide right off and it'll be a big smeary mess and then you'll have to start all over again so this is starting to heat up. I'm going to get my images on there before it gets too hot. So you just cut them off of your press and peel. And I'm going to be using press and peel for all three images. I'm going to do um, two on one because it's a bigger sheet and then one on the uh, the last one. The single one will uh, probably be using the electrical unit and the battery one will be using the... Okay, so that's getting nice and hot and I just touched it with my greasy fingers. I can't believe I did that. Okay, well that happens. And so what I'm going to do now, instead of um, re... Okay, so if you just did a dumbass move like I did and uh, touched your metal when you weren't supposed to, just get some isopropyl alcohol, wipe your fingerprints off of there. Okay. There. Save the day. That's getting nice and hot. Hopefully not too hot for me to start. And I am going to just carefully lay that down there. And the same with this one. Over this direction here and down. Okay, next comes the iron. I'm going to use a Teflon sheet over top. You can use uh, parchment paper. I've used parchment paper. It works good. And what you're going to want to do is a firm straight up and down press on there. And how long you press for depends on your iron and it depends on if you're using a, a griddle on there and you want a firm press. You want that heat to get right through there. Okay, I'm just going to stop recording and then come back when it's time to peel. So once you've done your ironing, you can also go over it with an agate burnisher or a metal burnisher. And that helps to impart the laser toner on there.
So the thing I like about the laser toner is you can actually see your image and um, see if it's starting to smear, which you don't want. Because that means it's getting too hot. going to try and peel up this corner here a bit and that needs a bit more heat So there is instructions for the PNP, and just follow those instructions, and not necessarily what I'm doing. 